Hello and welcome. My name is Gavin Fish. This is my channel. Thank you very much for stopping by. My channel is dedicated to really digging into the nitty gritty of unsolved and cold cases. I'm dedicated to really diving into those things. In fact, if you head over to my website and take a look at some of the cases that I care about, for example, the Gabby Petito case, where I've done more than 20 videos, you can see how many documents I've been able to put together, timeline I've been able to get together. I love really organizing and getting into that stuff. So if you like that in a true crime channel here on YouTube, I invite you to subscribe. Today we're going to be taking a look at a case that widely isn't known about, though where I live is very well known. It is the case of the murder of a uh, 34 year old oil city man, Danny Culling. Now, um, before I get into that, I want to let you guys know that this case is a little bit special in that it is giving me personally second thoughts and misgivings about the way, at least here in the United States, we investigate and prosecute crime. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think since we are running a 200 plus year old experiment here in the United States, and uh, because we have mechanisms for change, I think it's very good to think about those things. But I wanna give you guys a heads up on this case. This is not, um, it's not a whodunit kind of a case as much as it is a holy cow, our system works that way kind of a case. So by the time we get to the end of this video, I think that you and I and others that are watching are probably going to disagree on the system that we have. We're going to see it from different angles. And uh, I hope that you stay tuned till the end on this one because it's, I think it's extremely important. But before I get into it, I want to remind you guys that I am going to be at CrimeCon this year, which is coming back to London on Saturday the 11th and Sunday the 12th of June. At CrimeCon, you can get into the mind of serial killers and psychopaths, and you can learn from leading criminologists. You can hear from families and survivors. You can meet your favorite true crime YouTubers and podcasters like yours truly, and you can immerse yourself in forensic evidence and delve deeper into unsolved crimes. CrimeCon is the ultimate true crime weekend. It's partnered by CBS Reality, the expert-led true crime TV channel. I'm going to be there, so if you want to join us, you can actually get 10% off of admission by using code GAVIN when you check out. I will put a link in the description below. And if you are a Patreon supporter of mine, then you get 15% off. All you have to do is reach out to me. And uh, speaking of Patreon, I wanted to show you guys that I've actually added a couple of membership levels here. For the longest time, I've had the Citizen Detectives, which is the $3 level for which I'm very grateful. Uh, but we've got a couple of other options for you, so I invite you to check it out. It's uh, especially we've got some producer spots there. So uh, thank you, uh, Patreon supporters, for supporting me, and I hope to see you at CrimeCon uh, 2022 in London on the 11th and 12th of June. Okay, let me introduce you to the the case of the murder of Danny Colling. I'm calling it a murder, and again, a little foreshadowing here. Uh, when we get to the end of this video, I think the only thing that we're going to know is that the police believe that Danny Colling was murdered. The prosecutors believe that Danny Colling was murdered but many people will just simply refer to it as the death of Danny Culling. Um, Danny was born in Oil City, Pennsylvania. He graduated from Oil City High School in 2021. Uh, some of the things about him that I've read online is that he was just known as a caring and loving person. He was a person who loved working out. He loved his dogs. And his obituary said something very sweet about him. It said, he never met a stranger, which is, uh, is something that I hope that people will say about me someday. Now, Danny was last seen on December 23rd, 
2017. Um, and he just kind of up and disappeared. Family and friends looked for him for a few days, and then on the 26th, they made a um, they made a missing persons report in Oil City with the Oil City PD. Now, if I can just talk about Oil City here for a second, because this is important. Oil City, uh, as I said in my previous video, is kind, it's a small place. It was once a booming industrial town. It is known as the birthplace of the, of the oil industry. Uh, companies like Quaker State and Pennzoil were founded here. Uh, but since about the 1990s, it really has gone into a pretty sad state. I mean, there, there are beautiful parts of Oil City, but you, you see a lot of blight in Oil City. And unfortunately, because there aren't very many jobs, at least in comparison to what it's been historically, over the last 30 years or so, there has been a real problem with uh, criminal illicit drug dealing and use. And um, Danny was in that scene. Now, this is not, I, I, I guess I wanna express to you guys that I don't feel judgment about somebody being addicted to um, illicit drugs. I, I sometimes wonder why people start them in the beginning, why they try, though I know that like people are human, right? So, so they try things, but, but um, it appears to me by reading everything that I've read that Danny was a, a drug user and um, he was addicted is what it appears to me. Now, the, the details of the investigation of Danny's disappearance is they know where he was last seen, which was on the 100 block of Oak Grove Street in Oil City, Pennsylvania, which is only about three blocks from this bridge, which is known as Y Bridge. It's a, it's a rail bridge in Oil City. So we know where he was last seen. And so police did a whole bunch of searches. Uh, they included the Cranberry Township Volunteer Fire Department's Canine Search and Rescue Unit, uh, family and friends, assisted uh, they they looked for him from everything that i've read they they did their best to look for danny but he just disappeared on the on the late night or early morning hours late night of december 23rd early morning hours of december 24th the police also in their investigation conducted a whole bunch of interviews and private searches were made by family and friends you know they got together and they 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 just searched all over the place to uh to find danny the investigation by the oil city police actually led to the arrest of two people i'm not going to show their mugshots on this one because it turns out that they they really aren't connected to the case they i just found these two people that were mentioned in news reports as the oil city police were looking for danny and doing their investigation they actually arrested a woman named uh, deidre rose cunningham of medina ohio and um, uh, timothy michael geiger uh, of oil city pennsylvania and these two uh, Deidre was charged with a whole bunch of felonies, including delivery of a controlled substance, drug device or cosmetic, person not to possess, uh, use a firearm, firearms not to be carried without a license, criminal conspiracy, and then uh, Mr. Geiger was charged with burglary, criminal trespass, theft by unlawful taking, receiving stolen property, a whole bunch of stuff. So while the Oil City police were doing their investigation, they they found other criminal enterprise in Oil City. And I, I just decided to to keep that in the story just to just to kind of underscore or punctuate the problem that Oil City has with the drug scene. Okay, so on uh, May 28th, 2018, in the early morning hours, kayakers were out at the, they were kayaking about half a mile 
south of the Oil City Marina. Now, Oil City sits right on this river. It's called the Allegheny River. And this marina is, is just kind of a boat ramp to give you access to the Allegheny River. It's not a place where there are lots of boats or anything like that. It's just a boat ramp. Kayakers were um, out kayaking on the Allegheny about a half a mile south of what we're looking at right now and they they discovered uh they discovered a body it was near the shoreline and uh with just a little investigation by the county coroner the body was identified as as danny's the cause of death was not immediately determined now so we've got we've got a gap between december 23rd 2017 and May 28th 2018 so we're talking a little over five months that Danny was missing but within that time uh, actually really close to the beginning on December 31st at about 11 34 p.m. Uh, this man I, I I'm probably not gonna pronounce his name correctly his name is Eric Bichner or Beishner or something or Beishner or something like that. Um, he actually walked into the Oil City PD and he tells officers that he had gotten into an altercation with an unknown black male back on December 28th. When he did this was December 31st. It was less than a half an hour from the new year. And he says, yeah, I, I got into an altercation with an unknown black male back on the 28th on the railroad bridge that's known as Y Bridge. Um, let me show you. This is, uh, this is Y Bridge right here. So, and then he told officers that the man fell into the Allegheny River. And officers did note that they felt like he was lying. And we don't know how many times they interviewed Eric in between December 31st and then May 28th. But we do know on May 31st that um, he was brought in for questioning or he was questioned. That's what we know. And uh, he admitted in his May 31st interview that the man that he fought with wasn't actually a black man. He, at, when asked if he thought that it might have been Danny Colling, uh, Eric Bichner said, I think it could have been, and there is a high probability that it was. And then he even told police that he didn't want to think it was Danny and that he thinks it was Danny, but he did not want to believe it. He said that he saw photos of Danny Culling circulating around and he had had a feeling that it probably was Danny, but he didn't want to believe it. And one of the quotes that he said that I thought was kind of chilling was he, quote, didn't want to deal with having a homicide on his conscience. And he said, quote, being responsible for someone's death, do you know how bad that eats away at you? So I think at this time, police pretty much figure they got their guy, but they've got a couple of other people that they're talking to about, uh, about this case. One person who is known as Witness One uh, was interviewed on June 13th, uh, 2018. So we're now a couple of weeks past the time that they found Danny's body. And um, that person said that Eric had sent him a text message sometime between December 23rd and December 26th saying that, quote, going to jail, he threw someone off the bridge. Witnesses, that, that witness saw him the following day and told police that that Eric was freaking out and said that Eric had told him that it was a black male uh, that assaulted him on the bridge, but he didn't believe Eric was telling the whole story. Then on October 10th of 2018, between the October 10th and February 5th, there were multiple interviews that with a person that was known as Witness 2. Uh, this person was later identified as Michael Pierce, and this was a person who knew 
uh, Eric in the Venango County Jail. They were serving together. And uh, at the time, uh, Eric was serving time for a case involving counterfeit money that he used to pay for sex. And the story there is that he had access to counterfeit $100 bills and he actually went into a store and was caught passing a counterfeit $100 bill and then later on they found another witness who said that she was paid with a, a counterfeit bill for sexual favors so he was in in jail for that now um this witness to the the jailhouse witness said that Eric had told him that he met Colling for a drug deal. A struggle ensued that resulted in Colling, uh, quote, falling, being pushed or struck, causing him to go over the side of the bridge and into the Allegheny River. He said that Eric told him it happened on December 23rd. And he said that Colling tried to take his drugs, that nobody takes his drugs and that he'd do it all again. So that was witness number two. Now, police also said that they interviewed uh, witness number three, who said that he met up with Eric at a residence in Oil City on an undisclosed date, and that Eric had told him that he was involved in a physical altercation with a male on the Y bridge, which led to the male going over the bridge. Let me show you this bridge again. Uh, I would say the bridge is about 25 to 30 feet over the Allegheny River. Uh, the Allegheny River at this point uh, in the river is is kind of a slow moving river, but it's a dangerous river, especially in the winter. It's known to, to have ice chunks flowing in it. Sometimes it does actually freeze over. And if, uh, so it's a very dangerous place. And when I have spoken to um, a friend of mine, uh, Rich Graham, who is a retired uh, Pennsylvania State homicide investigator, he's told me that that bridge is kind of a place where this sort of thing happens either on purpose or on accident so anyway that was witness number three said that eric told him he'd gotten in a fight with somebody and that he went over the bridge okay so um it took a while but on february 5th 2019 homicide ch charges uh were filed against eric it was a first degree criminal homicide which is obviously a felony and in their investigation, police uh, determined that uh, the murder of Danny Colling happened in the early morning hours of December 24th, 2017, and they called it a drug deal gone wrong. Okay, so now um, Eric is in jail, and, uh, and a couple things happen with... Uh, hearings and so forth but on in May of 2019 he entered a plea of not guilty and then guys this is this is the part that maybe th this this is the zig right this is the zigzag here we we when when we get to this point I really feel like the police have a solid case they have uh Eric uh basically confessing to to the crime uh over the course of you know i mean he went in on the 31st probably because his conscience was getting to him and um and then anyway he ultimately confessed to to what happened to danny Colling. they had three witnesses that corroborated uh the the story that police were putting together and uh, so they had their guy, but on June 13th of 2009, there was a hearing held considering a pretrial pre motion for a writ of habeas corpus. Habeas corpus is a legal term that basically means, you know, bring the person in front of the judge, right? It's like you, um, a, a habeas petition literally means bring the body. So if, they're, if the lawyer has something that uh, they want the court to consider, they, they apply for this writ of habeas corpus. Now, 
Um, his lawyer contended that Eric's statements shouldn't be admitted in court unless the Commonwealth was able to show that Danny Colling's death was most likely the result of criminal activity based on other evidence. So what he was saying is this could have been an accident. It could have been a crime. But unless you have evidence that there is a crime happening before you got the the um, defendant's confession, then this whole thing should be thrown out. And to kind of uh, bolster his argument, he even made the argument that the autopsy didn't show any evidence of an assault. There was no evidence other than Eric's confession and the witness testimonies, and that's not enough. Okay, so the thing that surprised me about this, though, here we already did our zig, now we're going to do our zag. When I was reading about this, it turns out that Danny Colleen's uh, family, they didn't believe that Eric Bichner was Danny's killer. So they felt that Danny was being cheated of justice. Now, this is one of those things, guys, that I, 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 th this is complete. I'm in speculationville on this one, right? I'm just trying to think of the family of Danny Culling. And I know from uh, friends of mine who have, who are addicts and, and, um, tell me about their time using drugs, there is sometimes common knowledge, right? That they, on this street, everybody knows who done it, but nobody's going to snitch to the police. I don't know that that is the case with Danny Colling's family, but it kind of feels like they know, they probably know who did it and they, they didn't think that Eric did it. And if, Eric were to be convicted in Danny's murder, then he would be robbed of justice. That's that's our zag after our zig, okay? Now, in addition to that, when we get to this hearing, the the witness too that um, that the prosecution has has interviewed and is a strong witness, well, he kind of changed his story. And what he said was that while he was helping Eric in jail role-playing with some of the things that the prosecution might ask in court, and a witness to a guy named Michael Pierce noted as he was working with Eric that his story didn't match up from what he had said previously. Like it, it changed and so, he began to get suspicious that maybe Eric had given a false confession. The story that he said was that Eric was getting high with a lot of people at a house. He wanted to leave to get high by himself. Here, let me show you Eric again. He asked Danny to leave with him where he could buy drugs from Danny privately. And then the story goes that Eric passed fake money to Danny. Danny noticed a struggle ensued. Uh, Eric was afraid he was going to go over the edge and he pushed Danny to keep from falling over. And that caused Danny to go over the bridge. So that witness testimony changed to sound as if it wasn't a purposeful thing. It was an accident. And with the, um, the autopsy not showing any kind of assault, and um, with those two things, the judge on April 14th of 2020, a guy named Robert L. Boyer, ruled that the prosecution failed to satisfy what is called the corpus delicti rule. This rule requires the Commonwealth to establish the occurrence of a crime before the accused statement can be admitted as evidence. So because the crime wasn't established prior to Eric's testimony to police, the law can't establish that Danny Cullen's death was more 
likely a crime than an accident. And so um, Eric was, um, well, the case was dismissed. He wasn't found not guilty or innocent. The case was simply dismissed. Now, this causes me to have questions, right? Number one, is that law, <laughs> the corpus delicti rule, is that a rule that serves justice? The, the idea being that you have to be able to establish that a crime actually happened before somebody confesses to that crime. If somebody confesses to a crime and you can't establish that it happened with other evidence, then, um, then no confession. So this, this is where I'm conflicted, right? Now, I think about, I, I don't know if you guys watched uh, Making a Murderer, but in season two of Making a Murderer on Netflix, there was a, they, they covered in depth the confession that, uh, why am I blanking on his name right now? Um, goodness, I'm completely blanking on his name, but um, Making a Murderer. Uh, what's his name? Oh, Brandon Dassey. Um, they, they covered it in depth that, that false confessions happen all the time. And I personally believe from watching Making a Murder that Brandon Dassey likely, uh, that's a false confession. And we want to protect people from confessing falsely just to get out of an interview with the police or hoping that their life might be able to go on. I would love to hear what you guys think about this. Um, the case is still ongoing in the death of Danny Culling. Um, in June of 2021, Oil City PD said the investigation was still ongoing that they're working with the Venango County District Attorney's Office. The DA is a man named Sean White in Venango County, and they're still working on the case. But it is now coming up on a year since they last said that in the last update in the case that I have seen. So please put down in the comments what you think. Was that justice that... Um, you know, that Eric uh, Beechner uh, was basically the, the case was dismissed against him on what many people would call a technicality. Um, is that justice or should his confession be able to be the first step in establishing that a crime was committed against Danny Culling? I... Uh, I, like I said in the beginning, I am conflicted and I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Um, and that's my video for today, guys. If I, I wish that there was a bow that I could uh, wrap around this to make it all tidy and neat. I have to say that I am very sorry for Danny Colleen's family for what happened to their son, their friend, their uh, uncle, you know, whatever, however they're related to him, I'm sorry that that happened. Um, I pray that there will be justice uh, for Danny Culling. Um, but as it stands right now, that's where we are. So guys, thank you very much for tuning in. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like this video and you don't want to see content like this anymore, I don't mind if you give me a thumbs down. That lets me know the kind of content that you like. And uh, I think in our next video, I'm probably going to jump back into the case of Ramina Shaw. Don't quote me on that, but I've gotten a deluge of more documents more video, more audio on, uh, on that case. And so I think that will likely be my next video. So stay tuned for that. That'll be next Monday. And with that, I will bid you adieu and I hope to see you next time. Take care. Thank you very much for watching this video. 
If you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below.